Forget Rome, Florence, and Venice. I got a better idea. Possibly. Ciao a tutti, benvenuti sul mio canale. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. The better solution that I was talking about in the intro are small towns. Now a key question that I'd like to ask is, should you go to these small towns? And should you go to them especially if this is your first time here in Italy? Unfortunately, there's no one size fits all answer because every traveler is different. I mean, in all honesty, if this is your first time here in Italy, you really can't not see the Colosseum here in Rome, maybe the Uffizi Gallery in Florence or the canals in Venice. Also, many people that come here may never come back here again. That's, that, that's the truth, really. And so if you come here, do you really want to not see some of these famous places that I've just mentioned? However, the purpose of today's video is to talk about why you should go to small towns. And I'm gonna talk about my experience in Fuji this past weekend to illustrate the point. We had a good time this past weekend, and just being there really reaffirmed why I like going to these small towns in Italy. If you do happen to have the luxury of time, resources, or if you live here like me, then there are so many places that you can visit in this country. I've been here for 12 years and I've barely scratched the surface in my opinion. A lot of people who go and visit small towns in Italy often say, this is the real Italy. And what I think they mean by that is that it's pretty much what they expect to see when they come to this country. You know, the, you, know you come here for the traditions, the food, friendly people, and in my opinion, you find all these things, generally, in small towns. My wife, for example, is from a small town in Sicily. And from personal experience, I can tell you that a lot of towns really rely on tourists coming and visiting them, staying in the hotels, eating in the restaurants, and you know, just spending money in these towns. So if you do have the luxury of being able to see these small towns, definitely consider them, because these people, they're relying on you. On that note, you should definitely visit Piazza Armerina in Sicily. I went there a couple years ago to see a beautiful Roman villa. So, if you have the opportunity, go there. That's not the topic of this video, but I wanted to mention it anyway. All right, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. Let's talk about my past weekend in Fuji. You may be asking yourself, why should I go to a place like this? Fuji is an example of how in the surrounding area near Rome, there are a lot of little places that you can go and visit and you can really get that real Italy feeling, if you know what I mean. Fuji in particular is well known for its natural hot springs. And it's said that if you drink the water from these springs, it's just really good for your body. And more specifically, it can help people that have kidney stones, so to speak. So Fuji is divided into two parts. The part where we say it is called Fuji Terme, and the other part is called Fuji Chita, which is the older part and it's up the hill a little bit. Now, if you go there, you're most likely going to be staying in Fuji Terme. And we stayed at a hotel called Silva Splendid Hotel. Now, I am not endorsed by them in any way, but I do want to mention that we had a very good time at this hotel. It's a four-star place, and they really couldn't do enough for you. The staff was very friendly, and they were very accommodating with our baby. You know, when you travel with a baby, it's not easy, so they were very helpful. This hotel, as well as a few others in the area, are well known for their spas, and that's pretty much why we went there. There's a pool, you have saunas, you have a wellness center. They had massages, but they were very expensive. We didn't do that. But the main idea is that we wanted to stay in a place where potentially we could stay there all day if we had to, where every one of our needs is met. On a side note, we took advantage of the pool and my daughter had her first swim in her life. Not one tear. She's gonna keep quiet. Now, if you do wanna take advantage and you wanna see the hot springs, then there are two places in particular that you might wanna check out. They're called Fonte Bonifacio and Fonte Anticolana. We walk right by these places, but we just didn't have enough time to see them. However, it is worth mentioning. Something else you might like about Fuji is exploring. Wherever I am, I like to walk around and explore, even if it's something that doesn't look interesting, really. I just like to walk around and to see what's there. And what I like about Fuji, as well as many other towns in Italy, is that when you walk around, you find things. For example, we walked past this really beautiful hotel, and below there was this old car, and I think it was because somebody was getting married. That's usually what happens here in Italy. A lot of people, they celebrate by renting an old car and using that as their mode of transportation for the day. Or maybe it was the owner of the hotel and he wanted to show off his wheels. I don't know. One last thing that I want to mention about Fuji Terme is that there seemed to be a lot of wooded paths, and this caught my attention. And unfortunately, we didn't go up them because well, when you're walking around with a stroller, it's kind of difficult. But if you do like the outdoors, Fuji and the, and the surrounding area does seem to offer a lot. 
The bottom line is this, if you want fresh air and quiet, this very well is the place to go for that. As a matter of fact, we saw a butterfly flying around and my wife said that when you see butterflies, it means that the air was clean. As for the older part of the city, Fujichita, unfortunately, we didn't have much time to see it really. And actually, it was not easy to get up there. If you are interested in seeing this part of the city, you definitely need a car because I didn't see any buses that went up there. On that note, don't trust your navigator because we took the road that the navigator recommended and I nearly destroyed my car, the, uh, the clutch um, in particular. We asked the people at the hotel the, um, if they knew a better road to get up there. They did and that made all the difference. So this is general advice if you are traveling in Italy and you want to see these small towns. The navigator may tell you one thing, but it may behoove you to talk to a local and discover how to really get there. But anyway, the old part of the city was pretty much what I was expecting, really. I love these old Italian medieval borghi, as they're called in Italian. I just love looking at buildings that are nearly 800 years old, so to speak, and just trying to imagine life there throughout the centuries. For me, it's really fascinating. And what's also pretty cool is that the fact that it's on a hill, you see these steep little stairways, and it's just interesting to see how people live there, or used to live. An interesting fact that I want to mention is that Fuji is in an area of Lazio called the Chociara. And anybody who's familiar with Italian cinema might recognize the name. Sophia Loren years ago made a movie called La Chociara, which I believe in English is called Two Women. It's an area of Lazio that I really haven't seen, I don't think I have, and it's definitely my bucket list. It's full of little towns like Fuji, and the idea is that you go to these places to forget that Rome even exists. Like I said before, and I'll say it again, if you want to see the real Italy, go check these places out. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the big cities and even smaller cities like Frosinone or Salerno, that these places are not the real Italy, but I just think that the smaller towns is what a lot of people think of when they think of the old world, the old world Italy. Something important that you're probably wondering is, how do you get there? Well, there are multiple ways to get to Fuji. There is a bus service that leaves from Roma to Adamini, and this will take you about an hour and a half, traffic pending, of course. You can take the train also from Tadamini, uh, but you have to change at Fuji Anani, I believe it's called, and from there you would take a bus up to Fuji. But the best option, in my opinion, really is to drive there. So if you're coming here and you want to rent a car and you plan on visiting a lot of little towns, then this might be the best idea. Not only that, but when you have a car, you know, you're more autonomous, I've always thought. A car is definitely a good idea because there are a lot of little towns in Italy where public transportation simply doesn't exist or it's very scarce. And so if you don't rent a car, then you may miss out in seeing these places. Fuji is an example, uh, at least the old part. Now, when you're planning a your route there, you got to be careful. For example, if you look on Google Maps, it'll tell you that it's going to take you about an hour and a half to get there. But that can be deceiving, really, because this depends on what day you're leaving, what time of the day you're leaving, and is it summer or not? So it's summer now at the time of filming, and we left late on a Friday morning. And it took us about three hours to get there. Not only that, but before we even left Rome, my daughter got sick in the car, and so that was fun. We came back on a Monday morning, and that was smooth sailing. It took the full hour and a half like we expected, and no traffic, unlike before. So you never know. My best advice really is it's better to travel during the middle of the week, really, because weekend traffic is notorious in Italy. Also, Italy is notorious for the autovelox or speed cameras, and so you really want to be careful. However, you can prepare. Your navigator should tell you um, when they're coming up, but you can also go to our website, which I'll put in the, uh, in the description in this video. You can check that out, and it tells you where they are on the Italian highways. Parents out there, if you are traveling with very young children, a pre-toddler like mine, the key word here is preparation. We had to bring a lot of things in preparation for our trip. You know, you gotta think about the clothing, the food, extras of everything, and yeah, half our luggage was just for the baby. As I was planning this video, I realized I should probably mention the COVID situation. I mean, what's the point in planning a trip to Fuji if you can't even enter Italy? Like I mentioned in my live stream about two weeks ago, I did say that the situation as far as being able to come to Italy does look a bit more optimistic than it did in previous months. So this is good news. This is an ever-changing situation, so my best advice really is to stay informed. Find out what's going on currently. And the best thing you can do really is to contact your airline and to see exactly what's required 
before you board a flight to Italy, but also check government websites. If you're from the US, then check the US Department of State. Again, the key thing is to stay informed. Any tourist that wants to come to Italy must be either fully vaccinated or can prove that they have been negative at least for the past, I believe it's three days, could be even two really. But the point is this, if you have COVID, then you will not be allowed into Italy. Comment time, let's hear from you. So have you been to any small towns in Italy? Are you now considering going to a small town after having watched this video? Leave me a comment below. I love reading your comments. It's been great interacting with you. So let's hear from you. Grazie mille per l'attenzione. Ci vediamo alla prossima. Thank you very much for watching today. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.